Welcome to Jill Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, I just want to talk about one thing. We did a live stream today on the Alex Maschioli Show, and it was all about what the CEO of Voyager said as far as the price prediction for Bitcoin. And we'll get into all that, but let's take a look at what is going on to make this relevant. Well, first of all, Bitcoin went bananas. Uh, it is 11 a.m. here, El Paso, Texas time. It is January 2nd, 2021. Congratulations, we all made it. And Bitcoin went up 13% in 24 hours. That is crazy. Seven days, 33%, and it's about to hit 33,000. And uh, if you're just waking up for wherever you are, uh, good morning. Uh, also, it's a crazy day, and everything is going uh, bananas, ballistic, uh, as what it is. So really, the, the big question I have is not that this was happening, because we all knew it was coming. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, there's no real mysteries here for, for you who have followed me on the channel. I've always said this is going to happen, and I uh, thought 2021 was our year. I didn't realize that, you know, 48 hours after getting into 2021, we'd actually be here, but here we are. The real question is, where are we going? How far is Bitcoin going up? Is it going to be a huge retracement? Are we going to go to the moon? Is it going to be a million dollars? Well, what we are going through uh, this morning was just unbelievable. And I got a quick text from Alex. He goes, hey, can you jump on the uh, live stream? I said, sure. And we came over here. And it, was, it was a bunch of big guys, a bunch of big name hitters. Uh, of course, Alex over there on the top left. You had Ray Youssef, who's the CEO of Paxful. Uh, that is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, Bitcoin trading platform, really heavy into Africa, which he says is going to lead the new Bitcoin revolution. And what he was talking about, I can totally see why. You've got Alex Faisal here from Kryptonites. He's also the um, chief partnership officer over there at Swissborg, which is a brokerage, mostly uh, you know in the uh, European Union or EU. Ryan Gorman, the head PR guy for Alex. You got John Ajarian here. He's the MSNBC analyst over there. It's either MSNBC or CNBC. I always get that confused. And he's also uh, CEO of Market Rebellion. James Andrew, CEO of Global Liquidity, which looks pretty funny right here because he looks like he's yelling. It looks like John and Ray. <laughs> and Steve were like, what the hell? But uh, no, it's just the way they're angled. Uh, CJ, me, and uh, Steve from uh, Voyager. And it was, just, it, was just, it was just an interesting conversation. I got in there a little bit late, and they were already uh, hot and heavy into uh, what was going on with Bitcoin. But the question was, and it was a good question by Alice. He goes, look, uh, is 100K on the table anytime soon? And where are things going to go? And what Alex, or what Steve said here, was it just made me go, oh, okay, well, now I kind of get it. So just take a listen. Where, where is the next? Is it unrealistic for 100,000? I want to go to the group for, I want to go to the group for this. But, uh, you know, everybody here, are we, um, are you feeling bullish about 100,000 uh, by the end of uh, 2021? Are we, are we going to see that rise? I'll jump in on that. I know my, uh, my chief operating officer does a ton of uh, technical analysis projections. Uh, a lot of people following him. He, I mean, I, I think a hundred thousand might be low by the end of this year. I think we're really? we're projecting two hundred plus uh, just on this, and and we're we're really bullish, clearly. Uh, but he's just done the analysis, and he keeps looking at the technicals, and comes back to that you know two hundred thousand plus number. So yeah, I mean, he's got his analysts working on it. I mean, remember Voyager is a pretty big company, and they're really coming up. So. When he talks about 200K, like he says it so casually, like, yeah, it's that's just a, a matter of fact, 200K. And then Ryan here is going to ask uh, the pretty important question, which is, well, how do you get there? How is that actually possible? What do you All think right. is behind that? Like what, what will support that? Like additional retail adoption through PayPal and other channels, or is that mostly institutional driven? I think it's a little of both, actually. I think uh, the institutions are coming in and we haven't seen the, the real big wave of that yet, right? So we've seen some guys come in... Uh, I think there, the likelihood of an ETF late in the year is somewhat likely. Uh, it's better than it was in the past. Uh, I think there's starting to have some regulatory clarity in certain things. Uh, so I think by the end of the year, we'll have more of that. So I think you're going to get a lot of institutional uh, parties coming in more than we're seeing today. Retail 32. guys coming in. And 32. And then, uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, and the retails keep coming in on this because it's uh, – it's an investment they can feel comfortable making that maybe they couldn't six months ago. One thing that so that's interesting. So what he talks about. So first of all, how's he gonna get there? 
Well, it's because of the institution and the, the retail. And why is it so much for the institutions? Because of all the rails that have been put in in place so that the institutions can actually get you know, as far as an inroad to make it into our cryptocurrency market and start to really put a lot of money down. And we've been talking about this on this channel for quite some time. So you've got actually two powerful forces. Uh, on one side, you have the institutional investors. And we just saw like uh, Scaramucci come in and say, you know what, we're going to do a fund. And then you're, you're going to hear about John Ajarian. If you, I'm going to link this video in the description. You can watch the whole thing because John here is even talking about doing his own top 10 crypto fund. So you have this one side, very powerful. All these institutions coming in and going, we want to put a lot of money into it. I mean, we just saw that with, I mean, MicroStrategy kind of kicked off the whole thing. <laughs> nobody wants to be first, but nobody wants to be last. Except for Michael Saylor. He's like, I'll be first. I don't care. And then in he goes and he's like super bullish. And then people are like, hmm, I should follow suit because guess what? They put a billion in and they got a billion out. So they're at two billion in profits in four months. So why wouldn't you do that? On the other side, we got retail who has more inroads than they've ever had before. And not only that, you just got uh, PayPal to come in and say, hey, look, we know you don't know anything about this, but here's cryptocurrency. So you can buy cryptocurrency just like it's just treat it like uh, money. And uh, what's what was different about it is that your your dollars, your euros, your pounds, they won't go up in value, but this will. And guess what? You can use all this cryptocurrency and you can start to spend it on all the merchants that accept PayPal and we'll take all the all care of the rest. So they don't know in the background what's really going on. They just know, hey, I just bought some Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Litecoin, and uh, it went up, it like doubled in like a couple of weeks. And uh, I, I'm able to use this as money. Wow, this is way better than my cash, euro, pound, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I'm just going to keep using this stuff. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to do it. These are two powerful factors. And you, you take that on top of the fact that there is a diminishing um, supply. Uh, it's game over. And I think we, we just won. So there's two more pieces I want to play. And one is that Steve was talking about an ETF, which I'm not holding my breath or whatever. And Ryan asked a pretty good question. And then these guys are all insiders, except me. I'm just the only mook just standing around going, what the hell am I doing here? Uh, and I'm listening to all these guys who are really know what's going on. And Ray's going to make a really great point in a bit. So I want you to listen to these uh, these two comments here. Regulators were concerned about back during the last round of ETF, Bitcoin ETF uh, applications was the unreliability, uh, the lack of reliability in market data and trading activity. I, I don't really think that's been solved, though, right? Like, sure, to a degree, but there's still a degree of market manipulation as well. And you can't really rely on data from all of the top 10 exchanges. So I just, I, I don't see a Bitcoin ETF being approved anytime soon unless something drastically changes in that respect. And it's, it's a great point because it won't get, and Ryan's right, it won't get approved by the SEC because they will not approve an ETF because there is so much manipulation going on. And the, the answer here uh, is pretty good from Steve, but what Ray says in a bit is going to make you go, oh, well, pff, that's it. It is what it is. So we got to be careful. So let's so, so just take a listen to this. And again, this is why I like Alex's channel. I highly recommend you, you look at it. Uh, check it out because it has these insiders who are in the institutions telling you exactly what's going on. I mean, look at this guy, 4,000 subscribers, 4,000 subscribers. He is a hundred K he's a hundred K sub channel just for the guests that he has on. Listen to this. I was going to say, I'm curious what the, what the rest of the group thinks as well. I, I, I just, maybe I'm off, off base here. I just, I don't see what's been solved in that arena. Can I ask a question about that? Is this a um, is this the claim that the actual order book data and the trade data yes. that gets pushed out via their official feeds is not actually the real record of what has occurred? Correct. Yeah, like you have uh, wash trading and you know uh, yeah. just uh, order book thickening, and it just it, it, trying to make the appearance of liquidity that isn't there at least show up there, and that's the problem ultimately that regulators had with Bitcoin ETF applications. Before Ray starts talking, I'm just going to let you know that the audio sucks because Ray is having breakfast. I think he just popped on. I think he's in Miami or something like that. So just uh, I will try to work this out in post as far as editing. But uh, the audio is not the great. But the answer he gives is great. It's true. You see tremendous manipulation on centralized exchanges. Everything from scale order sniping, spoofing, layering, front running, back running. And even in DeFi, you still have the same back running on front running, but instead of the centralized exchanges doing it, it's the miners. 
that are doing it as well. So these these continuous limit order books and even these interval batch auctions, as far as DeFi goes, are highly can be highly manipulated. But it'd be easy to say that Bitcoin is probably the most manipulated asset class in the world right now. I don't know how gold and silver would rank, um, but since they're highly manipulated and kept down artificially by fake shorts on the forex every morning. This is not my area of expertise, but we all need to be uh, conscious that these things are happening. And we need to use OTC activity as kind of the hedge to what's happening in centralized exchange land. And I think that's where a lot of the insight you get from guys who run their own brokerages, their own OTC decks, is going to be very, very useful. So let's all keep that in mind because we, as insiders, do have a responsibility to keep the guys in retail safe and give them a bit of the truth without the rose colored glasses. Yeah, that's right, Ray. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's not like, it's like anybody else is helping us. So, I mean, that was a great answer. I really appreciate that. I like Ray. Seems like a great guy, doing a lot of great things over there at Paxful. So uh, that was uh, essentially it. I just wanted to to remind everybody that uh, take it with a grain of salt. I mean, I do believe that uh, I always say Bitcoin's uh, 150K. So Steve here and his his analysis team, they think it's going to be 200K. Sure. I hope I'm wrong. I hope Steve's right. And I hope other people are right that it actually goes up above that. But but who will know? And then real quick, that little uh, background that Alex has got, that's Trade the Chain. And if you don't know Trade the Chain, it's a sentiment analysis website. And it's only one of four cryptocurrency companies that has a direct API into Twitter. So it goes through all these millions and billions of tweets and just gives you like a sentiment analysis of what is actually going on. I personally think that news moves the market. I don't think that it's uh, sometimes a lot of other factors. I think news is the bigger thing right now because our market is so small. And that's what's great about Trade the Chain. So the website's real cool and it, it breaks down a lot of great information. And like I say, it's sentiment analysis. You have technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and now you have sentiment analysis. And it kind of works all together. I think this one, though, I think is, is one of the most powerful ones. And what's great about this is that since it crawls all these different blog posts and websites and um, Twitter, it, can, it actually gives you alerts to your phone about what is going on through the Slack app. And you get stuff like this. This is the most recent one. And uh, it was the uh, graph cryptocurrency that got listed on KuCoin. This is on December 18th at 5.19 a.m. This is when it was actually alerted on uh, people's phones. And then uh, in a day, actually in what? Within 24 hours, 28 hours, somewhere around there, it went from 18 cents to 56 cents. So if you would have got the alert right here and, and you would have known about it, made a little bit of a trade, 211%. Now, of course, you're not going to always, you know, graded out this this point and sell at this point but it's just one of those things that it's a powerful tool that you can have in your arsenal if you like to trade so if you're looking for trade the train just look in the description below uh, there's a specialized link you get a 14 day no questions asked refund if you want to check it out and all that good stuff so just check that out right there all right so that's it a lot of things are going to happen this weekend um I think we're going to see some fireworks, especially going on in 2021. I mean, look where we're at right now, two days in. What do you think can happen in the next, I don't know, in June or July? I think it's going to be huge. Anyhow, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, I will see you on the next one.